Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven women in business learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident, feel empowered, and challenged through inspiring stories, and tell it like it is advice for business, life, and leadership. Hey, thank you for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. This is Amber Hurdle, the Velvet Machete, and I am coming to you today with the number one question you must answer to sell your product or idea. So I'm talking your product, your service, what you want from your boss, what you want from your employee, what you want for your husband. This is the number one question you must answer on their behalf to get what it is that you want. Now, I know I normally start the show with some announcements, but I have oodles of things in the works. And quite honestly, I've been so active with uh, clients and um, other projects that my mind is a little bit melted. And I want to make sure that I deliver this content in an effective way. And so we're not going to muddy the waters with any announcements. We will save those for next week. Um, So let's get to it. What is that question? I just want to let you sit here and think about it. It's pretty powerful. It's an old school sales principle that I learned way, way long time ago. I mean, I was probably like 20 years old when I learned this and I've, and I learned it and relearned it and heard it. And for some reason, this concept, this question that people should be asking has gotten so convoluted. Nowadays, you hear things like, well, get your ideal customer avatar under control and and then put a picture and do these things. And yes, that is all important. But at the end of the day, you're going through all of that trouble to identify your ideal customer and understand that customer's needs and what problems you're trying to solve all to answer this one question. And that question, my dear bombshells, is with them, with them. What's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M. With them. What's in it for me? I am amazed by how many times I see this missed opportunity. I will go to a website and it does not tell me what's in it for me. I will get an event invitation. It doesn't tell me what's in it for me. I will get a nonprofit fundraising appeal, a letter or an email or something like that, and it does not tell me if I make a donation, what's in it for me. I look at offers, I look at ads, I look at billboards, I hear things on the radio, I see Facebook posts by very well-meaning people and probably very talented people, but ain't nobody telling me what's in it for me. Now you're like, Amber, well, you sound very selfish this particular episode, and I am not a selfish person. I promise I'm not. I think you figure that out. I don't know how many episodes we're on now uh, off the top of my head because, like I said, my brain is melting. However, what I do know is that you cannot sell somebody something if you don't understand what it is they ultimately are after. So let's break it down. Step one in the process of answering the number one question you must answer to sell your product or idea is who are you trying to influence? Who are you talking to? Who are you asking? Who are you trying to persuade? This could be lots of lots of people we're about to go deeper. Step number two, what exactly do you want that person to do or those people to do or lots of different types of people What do you want them to do? So step one, who are you trying to influence? Step two, what exactly do you want them to do? And step three, very importantly, is what are their key motivators? Okay, step one, who are you trying to influence? I know y'all love to take notes. I know you know this because I know this because you email me and you tell me that you take notes. So I'm going to try to repeat this and go a little bit slower. Step one in finding out the WIFM, who are you trying to influence? Step two, what exactly do you want them to do? And step three, what are their key motivators? If you can figure these things out, you can figure out how to tell the person you're trying to influence what is in it for them. So let's go to who are you trying to influence? 
likely you're trying to influence multiple groups. So in, in technical, like PRE official terms, these people are called key stakeholders. And, and we've gone over that term in previous episodes, but I'm, I'm going to give you the official term, but we're going to say different groups, different groups of people. So these different groups of people all have different motivators. They all have different opinions. They all have different reasons why they're engaging with you. So let's just say that you are a plastic surgeon's office um, and you are trying to sell cool sculpting. Okay. So if you don't know what cool, cool sculpting is, that is um, that machine that plastic surgeons have, or I think there's like, even like day spas might be able to have it if they have a, um, licensed uh plastic surgeon uh, or excuse me i'm sorry to all my plastic surgeons a board certified not licensed a board certified plastic surgeon um overseeing their medi spa then this is like this contraption that you that they put on your body and it like literally sucks in your fat and freezes it and then over time that leaves your body um it's it's excreted so if you're a plastic surgeon out there you are welcome for this um, advertisement but it's really not an advertisement because i don't know what would be in it for you as a listener because you're not listening to me to find out about cool sculpting but this is the example we're going to use okay so i am a plastic surgeon i'm trying to sell cool sculpting and so who am i trying to influence I might be trying to influence my current customers. So maybe you come and you get Botox. Maybe you've come and you've had uh, breast augmentation. Uh, maybe you've come to my office and you get um, regular micro pinning, any of those type of services. And now I have this non-invasive, basically like liposuction, only it's fat freezing. So who am I trying to influence? Current customers likely would be a great place to start because they've already exchanged money for me to solve their problems. Now, I might also want to influence the general public. So now I'm looking at advertising and marketing to an external audience, meaning people who are not already purchasing anything from me. So that probably is going to be a different type of conversation. And then maybe I also want to influence um other businesses who have complementary but not competing services with me that would be a type of service or a, a, a place that sells products that somebody who would likely want cool sculpting would go to. And so when somebody comes in and they're like, oh, yeah, well, I would love to wear this, but, you know, my fat jiggles right here and I really don't like it. Well, that person, if I am influencing them to help me promote my plastic surgery business would immediately say, oh, you should go see Dr. Amber. She has this new cool machine that freezes your fat and there's no downtime and, and it's not actual surgery. Okay. So those are three different types of people that you're trying to influence. So when, before you could even answer what's in it for me, you have to know who exactly you are talking to. Okay. Okay. So you have to define step one in order to get to step two and three for each of these groups. And I always want you to work from the inside out. So that would be your customers. What's in it for, excuse me, back up, Burr, see, brain fried. What's in it for your employees? Now that you have this cool sculpting machine, What's in it for your employees for them to promote it versus anything else? You probably paid a pretty penny for that machine. You probably want to get your investment back fairly quickly, and you're going to need your team to do that. So the first with them might be, what's in it for your employees? Is there any bonus attached to this? Is this just cool bragging rights for them? Get them excited about this, but if you want them to sell this, you have to ask what's in it for them. Maybe you have a competition. Maybe you express that 
Um, the more of this that you sell, the you know you might give a, a half day off or a work from home day or something along those lines. So if you want them to do something for you, you have to know who they are to begin with. And I'm getting a little ahead of the game because I want you to have at least one example as we're just working through the types of people that you might want to influence when you are promoting your business specifically. But honestly, I know a lot of you are volunteers too, and this works in volunteer work and nonprofit type activities as well, fundraising and event planning and all that kind of stuff. So we have to identify who you're trying to motivate. So you want to look at your employees, um, your management team, and your leadership team. If you have that level in your business, actually should always come very first, then your employees, any advisory boards that you have, um, any board of directors or board of trusts, of course, your customers, and then the general public. And most people get this backwards. Most people are like, oh, we've got this new thing. Like, let's just say you're a gym. Oh, we have new equipment. Let's advertise it in the newspaper. Okay, well, did you tell your employees about it? If somebody calls and says, hey, I heard you have new XYZ machine, can they answer the questions to that? Probably not. If you did not include them in the with them, what's in it for them to know about it? They're going to be empowered, right? So be thinking about this. Be thinking about the different layers of people that you need to influence to build your brand and deliver your brand experience to your customers. Who do you need to influence? Step number one. Okay. Also, if you can't define who you're trying to influence, you can't figure out their hot buttons. Okay. So that's, we're going to get there. We're not there yet, but I just want you to understand how important it is that you define the who before you define anything else. So step two, now that we've decided who we're trying to influence so we can tell these people what's in it for them, we have to figure out exactly what you want them to do. Again, such a missed opportunity all the time. You have to tell people exactly what you want them to do. You will notice at the beginning of most of my episodes or at the end, I say, please leave a rating and review. Here is why. I get that when people are looking for a new podcast, if it's like crickets and there's no reviews and nothing is recent, they're going to move on to the next thing because that's just how the world works now. It's all about that um, peer-to-peer recommendation. And so I know that you're super busy and I'm not going to passive aggressively suggest that you do something. I'm going to say, go to iTunes, leave a rating review. Here is why. And then I'm done. Okay. So that is not an overly aggressive thing to do when you tell people exactly what you want them to do. I have had the privilege of chatting with so many of you on the phone for about 15 minutes a piece. We've covered a lot of ground and it has been the most joyous experience for me um, to get to understand where you are in your business and, um, and then also just ask questions about what you might want next, um, both in content for the program and, and also the products and services that I offer. Um, but the majority of my time has been literally diving into your businesses. And one of the most recent, um, actually a couple, a few of the recent phone calls that I've had, um, I've gone to the website and I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is pretty. And, um, and I've learned a little bit about you, but what do you want me to do on this page? Like, it doesn't tell me what to do. And I think there were so many aha moments that you have to tell somebody, people aren't just going to assume. So when somebody is navigating through your website and they're like, oh, Amber is this and Amber's worked with these people and this is what Amber specializes in. Hmm. If I don't say book an appointment now or join the Bombshell Business Bootcamp here, click here or you know, get my blah, blah, blah report or the XYZ tips, click here, then you have no direction. And we move so quickly in this world. We're not idiots. We are not idiots, people. We are just busy. And we have a thousand things to do with uh, not a thousand uh, minutes to get it done. So 
Again, examples are like fill out this form to get a free coupon or book an appointment or buy your ticket now or vote no or call to reserve your spot or donate today or become a sponsor. These are all things that you can literally tell people to do when you're creating ads, when you're on your website, when you make a phone call and you're trying to influence something. Tell them like, hey, I'm calling you because I want to explain this. Here's what I, I'm asking you to do. It's it's just being direct. Be, just borrow just like like the very tippity end of my velvet machete when when you're asking people to do things, and when you are very clear on what it is you want somebody to do. Like for example, before I would go into big board meetings. I would make sure that I'd already lobbied my support before we got into that meeting because I could go to somebody who could influence somebody else in the room that maybe I didn't have any influence over and sell them on what's in it for them. And then when they go into the room that I need consensus in, I could tell them beforehand, I need you to back me up in this room. And there is nothing underhanded about that. There's nothing shady. I was always very upfront. This is what I want in the end. And this is what I want you to do. And that is a very powerful thing to build that consensus. Or would you do this on my behalf? Pick up the phone or get on LinkedIn and say, hey, I see that you're connected to XYZ who works for this company that I'm interested in working with. Would you mind introducing me? Would you introduce me? I would love for you to introduce me. Very easy ways to say this. How about asking an existing customer? Hey, thank you so much for that for that great um, uh, review that you left me on my website. I so much appreciate that. It really helps me build my business. Is there anyone you can think of specifically that I can help? I would love your referral. Very easy. Now you're telling me what it is that you want me to do. So you've identified who it is that you want to influence, step one. Then you have identified exactly what you want those people or that person to do. And only when you have those two things together can you understand what are their key motivators so that you can figure out how to sell them because you're going to tell them what's in it for them. We inherently are self-preservers by nature. Like that is who we are. We are designed to survive and and to make sure that we keep kicking. So we're always looking for those opportunities of what's in it for me. Back to the plastic surgeon example. You ask some, or you, excuse me, identify who might want that cool sculpting. You want to know um, exactly what you want to tell them to do. Book a free consultation. Come to the lunch and learn. These are things that I know happen from experience of working with such uh, businesses. And now we're at the point of what are their key motivators? Okay, so let's talk big picture and then we're going to come back to the cool sculpting example. First of all, let's remember you can't. You can't get here. (laughs) You can't get to the motivators if you don't do step number one. And you certainly can't figure out what their hot buttons are if you don't do number two. Um, That didn't sound good. (laughs) I'm sure somebody's little boy is laughing in the backseat of your car. (laughs) If you don't take step number two, um, then you will not be able to know what hot buttons to push if if you are not um, clear on what it is that you want them to do to begin with. So what are their motivators? What are these motivators that you speak of, Amber? It's kind of like values, like, oh my gosh, there's so many values. How do I define mine specifically for my business? Well, let's look big picture at motivators. Big picture motivators are things like fear, things like a sense of belonging, a sense of calling with um, a lot of people, especially men. Uh, Ego is a key motivator. Money, power, status, these are things. Okay, I have this um, game that I play with my husband while we're out and about. Um, I don't personally carry Louis Vuitton. I'm team Gucci. But um, the reason why I don't carry Louis Vuitton, and no offense to anybody because that is a beautiful, 
beautifully crafted bag, no matter what version it is. It is steeped in a brand story and history. Um, it is, you know, the, the, that is like the quality is unreal. So I understand why it's so popular, especially that never full bag, um, because you can like carry your life in it and it's beautiful and it'll stand up to all the beatings that you could possibly take. But it's very, very popular. And there's a reason why people want a Louie or a Dooney and Burke or something like that. Probably because they're big picture people motivated by quality, but a lot of it has to do with status. Like I carry a Louie and this says something about my status in this world. Even if you're not there and even if you're carrying a fake Louie, you're carrying that fake Louie to make people believe that you are of a certain status. So there's that. Um, and that's cool. So uh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying, you know, whatever. I work in a luxury market. If I wasn't carrying a luxury bag, that would also say something about me. So that is, um, I'm, I'm not bashing anybody. Here I'm talking about Louis Vuitton and cool sculpting. So I'm like just peeking at the shallowness of, of all humanity anyway. So let's just dive all the way in. Anyways, those are those big picture motivators. But then we can narrow it down specifically. And this is where I want to reintroduce the cool sculpting plastic surgeon um, scenario. Okay. So first of all, we know that we are trying to get our, let's just say we are trying to get our existing customers to come in and purchase more services with us with this new product cool sculpting that we have. Okay. So we know exactly what, who they are, and we know exactly what we want them to do. We want them to book a free private consultation because the staff is going to sell this person one-on-one -on -one based on their key triggers. But when I send this email out to my entire email list that all subscribes to this plastic surgeon's office, what is the big picture trigger? Is it ego? Maybe. Is it fear? Is it vanity? With women, we are less um, likely to respond um, for money because with men, and this is all marketing, don't be inboxing me talking crazy stuff because you know I'm all, you know, go women and all that good jazz. You know, I am definitely a feminist, but statistically speaking, Men equate money with power and women equate beauty with power. And so when you're a plastic surgeon and you are trying to get that big picture motivator, you might pick power, but you might put a powerful picture of a beautiful woman who doesn't have any lady, lovely lady lumps, <laughs> okay? And so maybe we take it a step deeper and what's in it for me? Now, here we have the opportunity after we've identified who we're trying to influence and we have identified what we want them to do. Now we have to answer the motivator, which we've done. They want more power. And now let's answer what's in it for me. So that email might sound something like, do you have a wedding a reunion or a vacation coming up and you want to be at your very best or the best in the room or whatever that looks like. You are painting a picture in this person's head of why the heck they are going to pay you thousands of dollars for you to freeze their fat and be uncomfortable. I don't know. It's not probably that uncomfortable. Uh, but they are going to go through this process for what? There's a trigger in there. You have to find it. But here's where you would fail. If you, completely coming from your own point of view and what's in it for you as a business owner, this is where I see people failing. Hey, we just got a new cool sculpting machine. You should try it out. Call us. Like that's, that's how I see a lot of marketing and influencing done. Or here's a story of, um, this, uh, this homeless teenager who has had a troubled life and, 
because of our organization, we were able to take this child off the street and place them in a warm home. And um, now they are pursuing their education and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But nowhere in there, it talks, I mean, it doesn't involve you in the story. It's somebody telling what they are doing with their stuff. And it is not answering what's in it for me. Now, here's how you put the end to that story. Because of your donation, another cold, hungry child will be taken off of the streets and you will go to bed tonight in your warm bed with a satisfaction of knowing that you have included somebody else in the way that you expect to live. Now, now we're talking about some with them. What's in it for me? If I read that email and I am motivated by a bigger picture of like calling, then I'm not going to be able to go to sleep that night in my warm bed without thinking about the fact that I missed an opportunity in my inbox to give even $10 to make sure a child was equally as warm, okay? So many businesses are so proud of what it is that they do, and they don't understand that if you can't answer what's in it for your customer or potential customer, you aren't going to sell Jack Diddley Doodoo, okay? So let's review. Step one, you have to know exactly who you're trying to influence. Step number two is you want to know exactly what you want them to do. Step number three is you have to understand what their key motivators are. And only then, when you have all those three things figured out, can you come up with the exact answer to what's in it for me. And you'll do that for every section of people that you are trying to influence from your employees, to your peers, to your husband, to your nonprofit counterparts of anything that you're volunteering in, to public perception and beyond. The key question that you have to ask in order to sell your product or your idea is with them. What's in it for me? Now, here's what I would like for you to do because I don't have anything else to offer you today. Your call to action today, what I want you to do is go to iTunes or Google Play or wherever you listen to this podcast. If you have read my book, if you have listened to this, then go out there and tell another woman like, hey, this helps me. I am into this. And here is your key motivator because you know what it's like to have somebody help you. That's why I do this. I know what it's like to have mentors and people help me with the areas that I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I did not learn all of this because I just, you know, sat on a mountain and it came down to me uh, through magic fairy dust. People invested in me. And so I'm going to pay that forward. And that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to pay it forward by not leaving me a review or fluffing my ego because I I don't need that, but because another woman might find the same solutions that you have found for your business and you will be a part of empowering her. So that's my challenge to you and empowering other women, women helping other women, I hope is your with them just like it is mine. And I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit AmberHurdle.com for more resources like show notes and check out the BombshellBusinessWoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.